Let's talk about semi and anti joins today. What's kind of confusing about semi and anti joins is that historically they haven't been an explicit join type. You haven't been able to write uh, from table semi join another table. Historically, semi and anti joins were actually a specific way that you would write a where clause. So in this video, we're going to work up to what the semi and anti join types have meant historically in the where clause, and then we're also going to show off some place where the semi and anti joins have actually been added as explicit join types, just to make our lives a little easier. We'll see that the purpose of the semi and anti joins is just to filter rows. I like to think of these as filtering joins. They're just for filtering rows based on whether some combination of columns does or does not exist in another table. So we'll start off with the where condition versions first, and then I'll show off how it's been implemented in DuckDB, because DuckDB has implemented explicit join types so that we don't need to write the where clause anymore. For this video, we're going to use some fake data corresponding to a, a website backend. We have some users. We have some authentication methods, each, uh, each authentication method that a user has used. And then we've got a list of events, login, log out, and login failed events. If you need a second to get up to speed with the data, pause the video now and just have a quick look through these rows so that you're comfortable with the data that we're playing with today. To illustrate the semi and anti joins, Let's say we need to figure out which users have or haven't used the, the separate authentication types and which users have or haven't had certain event types as well, certain like login events or login failure events. And let's say our output has to have one row per user with the, all of the user's information. We'll just start by listing out all the users in the users table. Let's do a select star from users. Give that a run, we've got our four users. Now, if we wanted to see all of the users that have got a record in the Google Auth table, well, I'm sure many of us would just do where the user ID is in, and we'll just do a select user ID from the Google Auth table. Let's give this a run just to see what it comes back with. We'll just get Alex and Charlie. That was nice and easy. We can easily see who's in the Google Auth table. And if we wanted to see the users that are not in the Google Auth table, we would just simply put not in instead of in. So users two and four, Blake and Dylan, they're the two that are not in the Google Auth table. We can do exactly the same thing with password auth. We can do an in. We see that Alex, Blake and Dylan are in password auth, which means that when we do not in, user ID three, my program's transposed it, let me just Squidging back up, you can see it's just Charlie that isn't in password auth and even events. We can do the same thing with events. Let's see which users are in events. You can see Blake, Alex and Charlie. So of course, when we do not in, we're going to see Dylan again. So this is something that we're all comfortable with. I'm going to stick it back to the end for the moment. We're all very comfortable using a where clause like this. Now, if you've been trying to do this with large data, you may have come across the alternative way of writing this by using a correlated subquery. So let me just turn this into the correlated subquery version. Remember, a correlated subquery is a subquery that references columns outside of that subquery. So to turn this into a correlated subquery version, we would do uh, where the users user ID is equal to the events user ID inside the subquery. This is correlated now because we're referencing a column outside of the subquery. And we don't need to select anything. We just need to select the star and we don't need this anymore. We will just write exists. So it's a where exists something in this correlated subquery. Remember, since this is a correlated subquery, it will run per user. The exists will mean that we'll only keep the users where this returns something which will be exactly where there is at least one user in this event, uh, in this event table, sorry. Let's give this a run to see what we get. Exactly the same output. And if we wanted to do the 
uh, the alternative who's not in the events we simply do a not exists instead again we get Dylan let's put this back it's likely that if you haven't at least written one of these yourself that you would have seen one of these somewhere and this is the semi join so when somebody says that they're doing a, a semi join uh, with the users table and the events table this is what they mean they're joining the events table onto the users table via a correlated subquery and keeping only the rows or let's keep it in this case only the users that have a corresponding user ID in the event table the anti join is then when we stick the not in front of it and that's it a semi join is just using the the where clause with an in or an exists with a correlated subquery and an anti join is just a not in or a not exists that's all it is so when someone says they're doing a semi join or an anti join they're really just filtering the base table where by the existence of uh, rows in another table what's important to note about this as well again i already mentioned that we call it a join because we are doing some kind of some kind of lookup but it's not really a join because we don't have any of the columns from the events table available to us. We do a select star and we still got all the stuff from the users table. It's going to be significant in a minute. What's nice about using this is that it's very easy to extend. So we could say, what about the users that have had a login failed event? Well, we just need to add an extra and condition to our where clause inside the correlated subquery. We just do the events event type is login failed. Let's give this a run to see who we get. Alex and Blake. They're the only two users that have had a login failed event in the events table. So it's very easy to filter rows in our base table by doing a lookup in another table just to see if there's a record that corresponds to that particular user for a given set of conditions. There aren't many, but there are a few databases that do support an explicit semi or anti join, actual join type itself. So let's see this in DuckDB. I've kept our semi join from earlier up the top here. This is the traditional way that we would do a semi and anti join. Remember the, the anti would just have the not in front of it. But something like DuckDB has actually implemented uh, a join type called semi and a join type called anti so that we don't need to worry about doing this where clause. So let's see this in action. If I wanted to do the same as the top here, doing a semi join on the events table using the user ID in DuckDB, I can just write semi join events using user ID. This is a very familiar syntax to us. This is just how we would write any other kind of join. Now I'm going to give this a run just to see what we get. We get absolutely identical outputs. There's one really important thing that I want to call out here. We've done a select star and we've done a join with users and events. But in the output, we're only getting the user ID columns. This isn't typical in a join. So this is just one way that the semi join in DuckDB really is respecting the traditional approach to semi joins. It is not making the events columns available to us despite being a join. We do a select star, we only get the users columns. If we try to write some of the events columns here, we'd get an error because the events columns are not available to us. This is not the purpose of a semi join. Semi joins are not for getting columns from another table. They're only for filtering the rows in your base table. We can do exactly the same thing with an anti join. Instead of writing semi, we just write anti. And of course, we get Dylan. If we also wanted to add extra conditions like we could in the traditional one, let's say where the uh, events event type is login failed, well then we just update our condition, our join condition. So instead of using using, let's use on. So we're doing it on the user IDs and we can specify this particular condition. So let's do the semi join first. So I run the semi join version using the traditional syntax. We get Alex and Blake. And now I'll run it using the DuckDB syntax. We get Alex and Blake. 
Let's do the anti-joins as well, just to prove that it works. If I do not exist in the traditional approach, so that's the traditional anti-join, get Charlie and Dylan. And if I rewrite semi to anti and duck TP, get Charlie and Dylan. This really is just the, the traditional exists, not exists, or in, not in, that we're used to in traditional databases, just with a, a cleaner syntax for us to use. But don't think of it like a normal join. It doesn't make the columns available in the joined table. It's only for filtering. To wrap up, we've seen that semi and anti-joins are really just a where clause. It's just where some, uh, some combination of columns does or does not exist in some other table. Traditionally, we'd either do this using an in condition with a subquery or an exists condition with a correlated subquery, whichever one's more performant for your needs. And in something like DuckDB, it has actually added a join type to save us from having to write the, the where clauses. In all cases, we can additionally add extra conditions in exactly the way that you'd expect, just by adding extra conditions to the right place in the query. Pretty much all databases will support the traditional approach using the in or the exists. And it's only a few select databases that are actually exposing the, the concept of a semi-joiner and, and an anti-join as explicit join types. DuckDB is just one example, but there are a couple of others as well. But if you are to using a, a more traditional database, say SQL Server, Postgres, SQLite, uh, any of those, you will need to stick to the traditional approach. But it's an approach that you're familiar with. This is just the name that we use for it. Are you using a database that supports an explicit semi or anti-join join type? Let us know in the comments below. But I hope you found this useful and we'll catch you in the next one.